Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and I currently live in Denver, Colorado. My coding experience prior to Colts Web Developer Bootcamp was pretty minimal. Back in high school, about nine years ago, I took a coding class and learned the very basics of HTML, like a simple H1 and paragraph tag, and at the end of the semester I built a small project. So going to Colts course, I didn't know much at all. So I finished the course roughly around April of 2019, and I didn't get my first job offer until November, so roughly about seven months. I used a variety of different resources while going through Colts course and also post-completion. Free Code Camp is a great resource reinforcing the fundamentals of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And also on Udemy, after I finished Colts course, I bought Angela Yu's web developer course, and she does a great job explaining topics and has solved projects along the way. Ian, I utilize your Get Fundamentals course on Udemy, as well as your Code with Node course. On YouTube, Brad Traversy, also known as Traversing Media, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know. He does a great job explaining topics, has great crash courses and tutorials doing small projects focusing on vanilla JavaScript and HTML and CSS. WebDev Simplified also is a great resource. He takes complex topics and does a great job breaking it down to um, easy to understand terms. And Dev Ed is also a great YouTuber. And it, it sounds like there's a lot of resources, which quite honestly, um, there is. But to me, each person is a great teacher, has great tutorials and projects to reinforce what you learn, and they make it fun along the way. The hiring process was definitely tough. After the first few months of completing Colt's course, I applied to over like 100 to 150 jobs within a two month span and got nothing but rejection letters. So it was definitely challenging, but it made me look back and focus on things within my control. So I looked at my personal portfolio, my resume, cover letters, and asked others for their advice and critiques as well as things that I can add to my current personal projects to make me stand out more. I will say to anyone out there, apply as much as you can, have a template for your cover letter in which you're able to swap out, say, two to three sentences that cater specifically to the job you're applying to. This helps streamline the process while saving you quite a bit of time. Also, when you come across these job postings, it can definitely seem overwhelming as they're asking you to know like 20 to 30 different things for a junior position. So try not to be intimidated by them, because I feel like some of these job postings just list everything just to list them. Accept as many interviews as you can. Write down the questions that you get asked during those interviews, so you can become fluent in your responses, as a lot of these interviews will ask similar questions. And if you come across any coding questions, try to memorize them and figure out different ways to approach them and answer them as well. The first few months were definitely challenging, especially being a self-taught developer entering a brand new industry. I definitely went through an imposter syndrome phase for the first few months, and I still do, but it's gotten better. It primarily stemmed from going from tutorials and small-scale applications that I've worked on to trying to read and understand large-scale applications on code others have written, and trying to learn new frameworks along the way and coding guidelines the company adheres to, so that was definitely a challenge. Going to my current job, I didn't know. Vue.js, TypeScript, Axios, and a few other things, so it was all a balance between trying to figure out how the applications worked, the code base behind each application, all while trying to learn Vue, TypeScript, Vue.defy, APIs, and also trying to make sure I got my tickets done within the two-week sprint that we were operating on since we were trying to launch some applications. So it was definitely deadline-driven, while also a lot of self-learning but I'm very fortunate to be where I'm at in my company since they foster growth and understand that I'm a junior developer and my learning curve is going to be high and they've been really patient and supportive along the way. My current position is a junior front-end developer. So for the past few months, we've been working on multiple tablet applications, one for the customers and one for internal use, such as managers. We have over five applications, so days can vary from receiving bug tickets that we've encountered ourselves or when customers submit a bug report. At work, we go off a two week sprint. So during those two weeks, my tickets can range from bug tickets to tickets to update or build out new features to add to existing or new applications, refactoring code, or if we have the time to research different things we can introduce into our code base. Like right now, we're looking into adding Jest as a front end testing framework for our existing applications and also future applications. And since we Recently launched a couple of applications. The entire process of that was obviously building out the applications, 
doing a lot of QA testing, making sure that the application flows worked, the UI looked good, addressing any bugs during the testing phase, and doing final polishing. And now since we're post-launch, we are moving ahead by continuing to add new functionality, resolving any bugs that come up, and continuing to release new versions of our existing applications while also starting to work on a few new projects. My biggest piece of advice to current students of Colt's course is that whether it's applying for a job or starting a new project, you're never going to be fully ready, but still go for it. For me, when I wanted to start a new project, I was caught up in uh, tutorial hell for so long where I would just watch tutorial after tutorial after tutorial, and that really limited my ability to grow because I was within this enclosed setting where the instructor would lay out what we're going to do, uh, how we're going to approach it, and everything was going to be correct at the end instead of me taking the initiative to build my own projects, accept failure, being okay with that, and then growing from it. Because when you start your own project and you break your own code, you're not only figuring out how to resolve the issue, you're also working on your ability to research topics on Stack Overflow and GitHub. And that's what's gonna take you to the next level instead of just continuing to do tutorials. And I'm not saying anything about it, about tutorials. They're, they're great resources, but they definitely have a ceiling to them. Whereas you need that self growth and just pushing yourself past those boundaries. And when it comes to jobs as well, you're never going to be fully ready. You're going to continue to refine your resume, your cover letter, your portfolio and all that stuff. So go apply anyways. You just never know what company might take a chance on you. If you're going to land an interview, like take advantage of those opportunities. And if you get a, if you get an interview, great. Take that as a learning experience on how you can improve or if you get feedback on your resume and portfolio and cover letter, like how are you going to improve upon that? So yeah, just go for it. A valuable lesson that I've learned throughout the entire process is to build good habits early, especially when it comes to taking care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. Learning to take breaks is essential to your health and your productivity. So I would recommend take breaks every 30 minutes when you're coding. Find new hobbies outside of code because constant coding can definitely lead to burnout. Like for me, I was so consumed by work when I first started. I would stare at the computer screen for eight hours, drive home, and then work on code for another six hours until very late at night, which just led to a lack of sleep, being mentally drained, poor productivity, and that also fed into my imposter syndrome because I just was so consumed on trying to catch up and stay afloat. So find something sustainable, take care of yourself because it's just not worth destroying yourself um, coding wise, destroying your health because one, you might lose that passion that you first had for coding. And also um, it's just gonna build bad habits for other things as well.